come to the end of our journey. And before I let you go, I, I want to emphasize that what we've just done, as, as difficult as it was, it's the easy part. Understanding the diseases, understanding the pathophysiology to the extent that we do is really the easy part. It's the, it, you know, there, there, there's a right answer, there's a wrong answer. What's the hard part? The hard part is, is figuring out how these diseases interact with an individual. And there, and there are so many different individuals, so many different reactions. And you're not, you're not those individuals. You are the caretaker. You are the physician that is going to help individuals navigate their, their disease, their illness, their, uh, their experiences. And I really like this quote from Sherwin Newland, um, who says there's a big difference between what we call disease and what we call illness. A disease, a pathological entity, an illness is the effect of the disease on the patient's way of life. And I just spent all this time talking to you about disease, and now you have to go treat illness. Big difference. And Sherwin Newland's quote, uh, I, I learned of it when I read the um, obituary of Leah Lee. And Leah Lee is the, is the young girl who um, was the subject um, of a book by Ann Fadiman called The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down. And, and what you learn from this book is that this young girl had a very um, uh, severe type of epilepsy. And it was, um, it was, from a medical point of view, it was a severe type that was intractable. It really needed aggressive medical treatment to get it under control. From Leah Lee's parents, and Leah Lee's, Leah Lee's family is a Hmong, uh, or, or, or Hmongs, Hmong people. And um, from their perspective, there was, they saw the problems, but they also felt as though the uh, seizures were a sign of her divineness, a sign that she was a chosen individual. Um, uh, it was a, literally a mixed blessing. On the one hand, Leah's soul had been taken from her and she needed it back. On the other hand, her condition portended spiritual giftedness. And so the parents had really a mixed motivation as to whether uh, they wanted to have this fixed or not. And so they, they, would, they would give the medicine or take the treatment at some points and, and not at other points. And so this is a, I, I think that this is a really important book to read. It really uh, emphasizes the difference between a patient's goals and, um, a, and, and the medical establishment uh, goals or view of the same same uh, situation. In this book, um, Ann Fadiman describes the most popular physician amongst the Hmong community. And that person was not in the, in the hospital, which was uh, associated with the university, but was in private practice. And the, the, uh, the physician who was popular amongst the Hmong was not viewed to, was not considered to be a particularly gifted uh, physician. Um, uh, he's not the most intelligent. Uh, he's an adequate physician. Uh, uh, but he happened to espouse a philosophy that carried more weight with the Hmong than any degree of knowledge, intelligence, or technical skill. When I asked him why he didn't usually force his Hmong patients to comply with conventional American medical practices, he shrugged and said, it's their body. So uh, that's a situation where, he, where this physician's recognition of the, illness, of the illness of this, not the disease, the illness, um, is the chosen, that's the chosen path for these, these patients prefer it. They prefer to be seen uh, uh, for their illness, for their experience, for what it means to them, rather than for what it means to the physician and what the medical establishment would, uh, would prefer to do. Um, now, I, I'm not going to pretend that that's always a simple uh, choice, and it's not, and uh, particularly with pediatric patients where uh, a parent may be making a decision 
that a, a pediatric patient may not be able to uh, contribute to and that that decision may in fact um, have reverberating uh, consequences later in life. So to carry forward with this uh, idea of um, it's the experience, not the disease, uh, at, at, when I was thinking about this, I sent out a questionnaire to a few friends who I knew had neurological diseases, and I asked them to rate their uh, experience with this disease from zero, um, which was a total curse, to 10, which was a growth experience, total growth experience. And one of the people uh, that I sent it to had an early, early Parkinson's disease. And what this individual wrote to me was, um, well, first he says, the, the first reaction to the diagnosis was one of relief. And that is a very common thing to hear. And he says, it has, uh, it has brought uh, my spouse and me closer together as we contend with a common enemy. It's made me more sympathetic to the trials and tribulations. Um, it has made him appreciate the suffering of others. Um, and so he says, on a scale of one to 10, one designates PD as a curse and 10 as a growth experience. I would grade my PD as an eight or a nine. Imagine that, an eight or a nine. Uh, upon reflection, I think that my PD has made me a better person with respect to my own self and to others about me. Now that is a, that's a tremendous thing. So when you, when you go to treat that individual, that's important information to have. What does it mean to you? Not what does it mean to the physician, you as the physician. What does it mean to you, the patient? Uh, now, that's not always the case, that people look at their uh, diseases as growth experiences. And this is a, a comment from a person who had childhood OCD. I can only tell you my personal experience being commandeered by crippling OCD as I turned 13. It stole my life. It ruled what I could do. It paralyzes, requires, and while I was alive inside, I was locked up, locked away. Some demon had come to live at the controls, and demonically, it wrinkles up your actions, minute by minute, hour by hour. I am shriveling as I type this, the memory of mental anguish that tortured 24-7. So that's another experience. That person wants every aggressive treatment possible. And another um, point to remember is ha the power of diagnosis. One of the knocks on neurology is, oh, you can really only diagnose. You can't really do much about, for example, you can't do much about ALS. You can't do much about Alzheimer's disease. Um, you can do something about Parkinson's disease, but in, over time that, that gets less and less. So, so that, that's a typical knock, but I w would counter that diagnosis is a big deal. Diagnosis, um, knowing what's going on is a big deal. And, uh, and we saw that with the individual with Parkinson's, um, uh, and, uh, and, and you see it in general. Um, it, and people, once they have a diagnosis and a prognosis, they find a way to make sense of their experience in their lives. And this is a, 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 a young uh, woman who was in a, uh, an accident where a helicopter uh, was spinning and actually took her left hand uh, an eye, so she lost her left hand and eye. She was she was profiled in People magazine, um, and she's made a, a physical recovery. She's she's a she's a happy person at this point, um, and she says my accident was bad, but I think it's deepened me as a person and increased my compassion for people and intensified my joy. It's kind of weird to say, but I wouldn't trade it. So that's really quite a remarkable um, statement. Uh, I've been through a lot, but I'm living. This is my new normal. And, and for some people, the new normal is the always normal. So imagine if you're born with a congenital condition, you really have known no, nothing else. And this is uh, 
The next quote comes from an individual who was born with a, a, a very um, debilitating uh, uh, congenital condition. Uh, this individual is, is um, only mobile by using a, a wheelchair and has other uh, limitations uh, due to her uh, uh, congenital condition. And she says, in response to, to this question, she says, I wholeheartedly agree that it has been a growth experience. Having this disability has definitely shaped my life, given me a lot of things that I may not have otherwise, such as determination, compassion for others, and strength. It's really made me the person that I am today, and I just don't think that I would want to change it even if I could. So these are powerful words, and they're powerful things for one to consider. Ours is not to understand, you know, our, we, we don't know unless we ask, and in, until and unless, unless and until we ask. We do not know how a disease affects another individual. As doctors, as physicians, my uh, hope I'm not a physician, I am a patient, and my hope is that as physicians, you are responsive, you're interested in how diseases and conditions affect your patients. Um, so neurology, neurological conditions have a, a particular uh, ability to, to, um, to do things that other types of disorders, say cardiac disorders, or, um, uh, or bone disorders or blood disorders, et cetera, do not have. And that is to attack who we are and our, and our own sense of self. And um, this is an individual talking about uh, their father who's manic depressive. I knew when he felt, when he felt okay and when he did not. He had marked changes in his personality indicated when he was my father, and when he was my father controlled by something in his head, so not really my dad, not really him. Normally he was not a violent man, but could be when he was in a manic state or could be suicidal when depressed. I never knew him to hurt anyone, but I did watch him destroy many things around the house. Was he responsible for those acts, or was it his illness? I have a bit of prejudice here, but I feel it was his illness controlling him. So that's a place where Neuro neurological conditions have a very uh, particular strength. They can attack the thing that is most critical to us and to our loved ones. So these disease, this disease, which is this, this individual, this um, man is manic depressive. Does, does the damage uh, start and end with him? No. It affects his children. It affects his spouse. It affects his friends. It probably affects his work colleagues. So these are, um, these are big experiences. These illnesses have, are, are extended illnesses. They don't just affect one person. And, uh, and um, just to continue on this type of uh, tactic one more for one more. I, I helped care for a woman with Alzheimer's disease and she periodically became quite violent. She felt she was being attacked or held against her will. She felt she was protecting herself. Never once did I feel she was responsible for her behavior. Her illness controlled her body. So that is a particular thing that can happen in neurological conditions. And it really makes one wonder about culpability, free will, culpability in the grips of, um, of a brain gone awry. So I want to end by talking about Bobby. Now we began with Bobby, and Bobby, um, Bobby uh, had a, a, a stroke in, in the ponds that we now understand so much more why he had the symptoms that he had. We can, we can talk about why did he have hyperacusis or why did he feel pins and needles in his, in his body? Why couldn't he point to something? Um, uh, and, and so on. Um, but the ramifications of what happened to him uh, are, are things that, that we don't, that you may not know, or that are not evident from the facts of the disease. And uh, I had the pleasure of, of meeting uh, Bobby's son, and I was just incredibly moved by the tattoo that he has on his wrist, 
which is Jean-Dominique Bobby, 1952 to 1997. And what this tells me, what this reminds me of, is the far-reaching effects that neurological disease has, not just on the person that's affected, but on all of the people that love that individual, all of the people that, that are affected by that individual's experience. So my hope for you as you go forward with all of this uh, neurobiological information is that you use it to help make people's lives better.